Today we're going to talk about who might replace K6 as the Hunter Vanguard in Forsaken, and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, and welcome to Guardian Watcher. Now, just so it's out there from the beginning, this video is completely, 100% speculation. Bungie has not confirmed anything with anyone, and are keeping a lot of things in the Forsaken DLC a secret. So, if you don't know, K6 will in fact die in the Forsaken, most likely in the beginning. It's been all over the interwebs, so it's not really a spoiler anymore, but... If you didn't know that, well then, I'm sorry. Anyway, Kate is dead and he will have to be replaced with a new Hunter Vanguard. One thing to know is that you cannot replace a Hunter Vanguard with a different class. And I highly doubt that Bungie hasn't thought of this already. So we are going to go over some of the known Hunters, possible candidates for the position, and then the not so likely to happen candidates as well. But before we get into that, if you guys would like a chance to win a free copy of Destiny 2 Forsaken, then you can enter the contest by clicking on the Gleam link in the description below. Also, let me know in the comments who you guys think will replace K6 as the Hunter Vanguard for Forsaken. Let's go over the known Hunters in the Destiny universe first. Starting with Andal Brask. He is actually the former Hunter Vanguard before K. Then we have K6, Anna Bray, Eris Moore, and yes, I know a lot of people thought that she was a warlock, but she is in fact a hunter. Lady Ifridi, Shiro 4, Tevis Larson, who was Cade's best friend, and then we have Tallulah Fairwin, who was the first hunter vanguard. Let's go ahead and start with the not so likely candidates. First off, Andal Brask. Can't be the next hunter vanguard. One, because he's dead. Tevis Larson, who was a Hunter Night Stalker and Cade's best friend, also dead. Now, for Eris Moore, I truly and humbly believe that Bungie will wait for a Hive DLC before they even reintroduce Eris Moore back into Destiny 2. Next is Anna Bray. Granted, yes, she is a Hunter, but she is also the NPC for Mars. And in order for Anna Bray to actually become a Hunter Vanguard, you would have to replace her with someone else on Mars, and I don't see Bungie actually doing that. Now, I actually talked to a lot of people, and a lot of people actually think that the Stranger from Destiny 1, which is also Anna Bray's sister, would also fill in that spot. However, this is unlikely, even though she does know how to fight, and she is an Exo, but she does not have any type of link to the light. She doesn't have a ghost. She only knows about the Traveler. And the same thing goes with Hawthorne. Hawthorne knows how to fight, but she is not a Guardian. She's not a Warlock. She's not a Hunter. And she's not a Titan. So to me, I feel like those two are pretty highly unlikely. What about Failsafe? She would be an awesome Hunter Vanguard, right? All you have to do is stuff her into an Exo body download Cade's fighting schematics, and then presto, a new Hunter Vanguard, right? Once again, highly unlikely, because just like Anna, who's gonna be the NPC for Nessus? And believe me, I went back and forth with Failsafe being a Hunter, you know, because that would have been probably the best solution to actually switch with Cade. She's freaking hilarious, and that's what Cade was. That's something you need in that fire team with Ikora and Zavala. And Failsafe would have like definitely like played the part great. But once again, not likely. Now what about Cade 7? Now if you think about it, Osiris's ghost was revived. And from the many trailers that we have seen, we do see a hole in Cade's face. So he obviously got shot in the face. So a new voice modulator would explain why Nolan North has taken over the voice versus Nathan Fillion. However, Bungie has confirmed that there will not be a Cade 7. Something else to ponder about is that even if a character is dead, they can always be brought back to life through the power of the Traveler and the help of a ghost. But if K6 is definitely being replaced with another character, then the possible Hunter Vanguards I would say are first being Shiro 4. In Destiny 1, he resided at the Iron Temple 
and he was the protege to K6. Since the Siva Crisis, we haven't really heard anything about Shiro 4, so a return would be nice to see. Then again, what about Lady Ephrodite? However, even though we don't see it, she was involved in the Red War. She took a position on the rooftop with her sniper rifle, she killed 216 Cabal with 199 shots. I know, pretty awesome, right? Um, and then after the Red War was over, she informed her enclave that she would be coming home. Then again, what about Tulula Fairwin, who was the first appointed Hunter Vanguard by the Speaker? Her whereabouts as of right now are unknown. But if Osiris was the first Warlock Vanguard and is still alive, then Tulula could be as well. Now the last candidate is pretty much totally a 100% left fielder. For those who don't know, Cade used to be a human soldier with a large debt over his head. And he was approached by Clovis Bray to have his debt removed. Now, the job offer itself isn't explicitly stated, but what Cade remembers next is coming to Europa where he was converted into an Exo. Cade's letter fragments in Destiny 2 revealed that Cade had a wife and a son who he nicknamed Ace. What if after Cade left his family and his son was old enough, he went to go seek out his father? Now, Ace is said to be dead. But what if during his search he found Clovis Bray and asked to become an EXO as well in order to continue his search only to find out that his father was killed before they met again? Technically, your human body would be dead and then you would be half EXO. That's a little twist, but I feel that Bungie would do something like that. What we need to realize is that anything is possible in the world of Destiny. Any of the people that I mentioned could be possible Hunter Vanguards, as well as just because the confirmation that they will be no Cade 7 doesn't mean that Cade won't just come back as just Cade, like without a number. Bungie is also tricky with doing stuff like that as well. I don't know. There's a lot more speculation that could happen, and we won't know for another few days when Forsaken is released on September 4th. Let me know what you guys' thoughts on the matter are. Oh, and before I forget, if you guys would like to see the newest Forsaken Vidoc, as well as the release of the patch notes on update 2.0 that Bungie has released last Tuesday, I will put those in the description below. There is definitely a lot of exciting and terrifying changes, so go ahead and check those out. Also, don't forget to check out part 2 of everything that we know about Forsaken that I will put at the end of this video. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to watch these videos as well. You never know. You just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more. Because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching. And remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.